Here is a DeLong High dehumidifier from 1994. This was given to me recently by Jay. I believe it's a 40 pint model. I can't fathom what else that 40 would be indicating, but it does not explicitly state the capacity anywhere that I've seen just yet. It's a very interesting model. It has an analog hygrometer on there which unfortunately does not appear to work. It was reading about 10 last night, which was certainly not accurate. And now today it's reading about 80, which is probably close to what it is outside, but it's only about 60 in this room. It has a full indicator and is automatic shut off. And I don't know if this hygrometer is working or not. It's pretty much right at the top. It is kind of humid today, but I wouldn't expect it to come on until more towards around there. And it has a continuous run, which I think is actually a continuous switch. You can feel it kind of change as it goes over there. Dehumidifier. Now this is just going to be a quick video because there's a problem with the fan motor and the bearings so there's no value in running it the way it is it's going to cause damage it has the old style coil which I think works better and it has R500 9.6 ounces The reciprocating compressor made in the Canada. It's model DH-40CA0. And it's a HAM certified, but that would be based on the old standard where these were tested at 86 degrees and I forget what percentage humidity. Something higher than what's normal in terms of temperature anyways. There's the automatic shutoff float. It's missing the bucket, but it's not too big of a deal on something like this because any square bucket that fits under there and goes all the way to the top will work just fine. It has a um, hose attached to there right now, which I'm not sure it'll ever come off because the rust has the rust of it. And I think the force you would need to break that would probably crack the plastic. So, I have to see. I think even if I was to use a, a condensation pump with this, which I very well might, because since this is not a fire hazard piece of equipment, it could run unattended all the time. So, putting a, uh, just st sitting a uh, condensate pump in there might be pretty convenient, so perhaps I'll just cut this back a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I got to decide what I want to do first because once I cut it, I may never be able to put a hose back on there again. So we'll go ahead and start it up for just a couple seconds to get the compressor sound. And then uh, that'll be it until the service and repair video. The fan motors on these things did fail pretty notoriously. And again, we're talking about failure after several decades of reliable operation and they fail simply due to lack of lubrication because the fan motor is moving a lot of hot dry air through it and the oil dries up and even though you're supposed to oil it hardly anybody ever does and it's got some baloney in there about the health and the environment and whatever all right here we go Heard a little bit of refrigerant go, and it is already cold in the first couple loops. So we know the refrigerant system works properly. It just needs some help in the area of the fan motor. So we'll get that repaired, and then I think this will replace the 
China Tranix General Electric or whoever the heck makes the thing that I have downstairs right now.